Yo, 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 so you want to become a property developer, but you've got no money, no resources, and no knowledge. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get from there to becoming a property developer, a step-by-step -step guide. Stick around, subscribe. So first things first, if you're starting from literally rock bottom nothing, which is pretty much how I started, I didn't really have anything other than an online following, which I could leverage in some ways, but really I had no knowledge and no resources. I just had an online following, which gave me some clout to be able to enter the industry, leverage some conversations, and I used what I could. You too will have some form of leverage. How can you utilize that to get yourself into the property space? But first and foremost, you've got overheads that you need to pay for. You've got a bottom line that you have to cover. You need to be able to pay for your rent, buy food, etc., etc. So the first thing you need to do is get a job. Numero uno, you need a job. There's just, there's no question there. Unless you have some money or mum and dad will give you loads of money or whatever, but you need a form of income. So you need a job, but you need a job that's not going to take up every inch of your time and your bandwidth because you need to use your spare time to start learning and start acquiring knowledge. So you need to get a job first. I would suggest getting a job in the property sector, whether that's at a state agency, an architectural firm, a construction company, get exposed to the sector and make money whilst doing it. So you'll then you know, almost double bubbling yourself. You're gaining knowledge and gaining some money and you're covering that bottom line and you're living a lifestyle. So get yourself a job and try and do it in the sector because that is just a smart thing to do. So get a job in the sector and then you have to be super frugal. That is the only way to do it if you're starting from scratch. If you don't have the luxury of loads of savings or capital elsewhere and you are really, you know, you got nothing, then you got to start saving money. And the only way to do that is by cutting overheads. So frugality is the next thing you then need to work on. I've just done a video recently on how to run a cash book and learn how to be frugal, how to save your overheads, which essentially is kind of like making profit. It's not, but it's kind of like you're making money by controlling your overheads and you don't need to increase your total revenue that's coming into your bank account. So frugality, get yourself a job, ideally in the property sector. And if not in the property sector, get a sales role. A sales job could be really beneficial for property because the sales aptitudes are the same things used when raising capital, speaking to clients, and ultimately building a business. If you're building a business and you don't know sales, then you need to partner with someone who does, or you need to learn sales yourself. So it could be in the sector, but it could also be sales. You could be selling cars. You know, The idea of selling an idea to a potential prospect is exactly the kind of skill set you need when building a development business. So sales job or in the property sector, and then frugality. You've got to be saving money. And watch my other video on cash books, and you can start to learn and understand your financial impact in the world around you and how you can start to save money here and there. Then once you're saving that money, we'll put these in tandem. Yeah, you've then got some savings building up. This could be in the order of a few hundred quid a month. If you can get to five 500 quid a month at least, and then ideally a grand a month of savings. And you might think, oh, but rent, but this, but that. Well, try moving in with a friend or something and saving on your overheads on the rent, or, or move back in with mum and dad. Whatever it takes to start saving some money, then we'll give you some surplus cash flow. And with that surplus cash flow, you then need to start really acquiring domain expertise. You need knowledge. There is no other way to start. You have to go and acquire the knowledge. Now, you can do that through more passive means like online research, watching YouTube videos just like this one, following a podcast. I definitely suggest following a podcast that's in the property space, Ground Up Podcast, shameless plug, is a podcast that I do every week with three of my good mates, Jack Jiggs, Dorian Payne, and Stuart Wythe. Go check it out on YouTube. We release one every week and we're talking always about property and business in the property space. And it's a great way for you to be able to acquire free knowledge just by buying into people that are talking about issues and problems and, and solutions in the sector. So follow a podcast. That's like a number one thing to do. And then follow YouTubers and other people who where you can get this passive knowledge. However, the passive knowledge alone will not give you the focus and the strategy to be able to implement and go forward and really build a successful business. You need to be able to get that domain expertise. And that could come in multiple ways. You can either go and buy a course, but make sure you buy a good course or buy a mentor. So you start paying a mentor monthly to get yourself going. Or there are some other things you can do. You can join academy programs and other bits and bobs, but you want to be careful with just spending money for acquiring knowledge's sake. You really want to spend the money initially to find a good strategy and learn the principles of property development, raising capital, finding sites. Those are your two key considerations. You have to be able to find sites. You have to be able to raise capital. And that's speaking to investors and that's finding your niche, whether that's you're finding HMOs, you're finding buy to lets, you're finding commercial resis, land gains, whatever. You want to find those things and then narrow in on those and either take some more courses on how to do those things or get a mentor or get a network, which is also you can do quite cheaply. You can just go to networking events, get around property people. You're doing this without spare savings. You're now trading your overheads on your lifestyle. You're then bringing 
bringing down overheads and then spending that money on acquiring knowledge. You need the knowledge. Do not think that you can search the internet, get enough high level information and then go and implement a strategy. You will just make loads and loads of mistakes. The best thing really is a mentor or someone who can be there with you along the journey or just a really good focus, deep dive on a given strategy. And that should give you the tools and the resources you need to be able to navigate your first project. But in any event, your first projects, they will just go wrong slightly and you will just lose some more money. But obviously the more knowledge you have, the slightly less money you'll lose. So savings, and then you're gonna put that into education. You're reading books, all kinds of other things, but all is gonna cost you time and money. And you can expedite those things by doing focused learning. But these are the three steps. Get yourself a job, ideally in the sector or in a sales role. Frugality, start saving money by cutting your overheads. And you can do that by running a cash book. Again, I've got a video on that. And then with those extra savings, you're then spending them on education, focused education, as well as passive. You should be doing passive education throughout all of this. From today, watching this, watching this video, go subscribe to the Ground Up podcast. There's also other great podcasts out there. Go start watching property people, business people as well. And you should be doing that all the time. But then you wanna do some real focused education, narrow in on a niche, learn something specifically. And at the same time, you have to, have to, have to build a network. If you don't have a network, you're not gonna be able to do enough activity in the space and activity breeds results. So you have to be doing activity by building a network. That network could be a network of investors, a network of property people, a network of estate agents. You have to start building out those resources and understanding their roles, how they interact with you and the business you're trying to build. But bear in mind, you're not starting out with very much. So building this network can be quite tricky from the start. You can offer free value to people already in the space and say, oh, look, I'll give you my time if you could just give me some, some knowledge in return. And you don't take any money for it. You just go and give them your time on a weekend. Now that can be quite difficult because people like me, let's say you came to me and said, I'll come and do free work for you if you could just teach me this and that. And I'll go, all right, well, I understand it's free, but it's going to cost me time and I'm not going to give that away for free. So hence people do training courses because that's how they monetize that knowledge and you get access to it. And that is why you pay for training. Or there may be some people out there who are not so far on their journey. They may be just ahead of you and they might need some free help. Your time may be just that bit more valuable to them than them getting anything in return for it. So you can do that. And I did that from the start as well. I went and just found people and went to their sites and did whatever I could to try and get exposed to the network and to the industry and start to learn who people are, where they operate, what their strategies are. And building that network is just crucial. You have to build that network. And through that, you will do a hell of a lot more learning, which ties into the educational part. Yeah, building a network you need to be doing the whole time. And it shouldn't cost you that much. It's traveling, it's maybe paying for a few networking events here and there, asking lots of questions, taking lots of notes, building up almost a CRM, a database of all the people you know and the people you meet, and you start to get an idea of the property landscape. So now you're building that network, you're making up these savings, what are you gonna focus on? Now that's kind of how long's a piece of string. There's all sorts of things you can focus on. But I would always say, start with sourcing. Sourcing property is possibly the lowest barrier to entry of any strategy because you're only trading your time for it. You go out and after through all of this, you're gonna get a good set of skill sets and knowledge that are applicable to you then being able to go and find a site within a given domain, whether that's a HMO or commercial to residential or land and planning gains or whatever it is. And you can then package that up, learn how to package it up compliantly and then hand it over to an investor, charge a fee for the service and you're arbitraging that value uplift from the time you've spent. You've got the time, the investor doesn't have the time, but they've got the money. You're being a, coining a phrase from Jack Jiggs, friend of mine, you're being a solution provider. You are providing a solution and the uplift of that site to said investor, an investor pays you a fee for it. And you can make three to 7,000 pounds per transaction. That's a good amount of money. You only need to sell one of those a month or every other month on top of your day job. So you could do this stuff on the weekends or you could maybe get a day off here and there from your work and whatever it is to try and go and find these sites. Or you might partner with your brother or something and, or your sister or whoever, or a friend of yours, and they might go do some work whilst you're the brain of the operation behind and you're making some of the money. You can contribute together. There's always strength in numbers. If you can partner with people, trusted people, you don't just want to go partner with anyone willy-nilly. Don't go to a networking event and partner with someone straight away because that just ends in tears. You really got to know and trust people before you partner. But that will expand your bandwidth and you'll be able to do more and then put those that energy into sourcing, which will teach you a fundamental skill set. And I've explained this in another video that to be a developer, you need two main skill sets under your arsenal, and that is finding sites and finding money. And this is going to help you learn how to find sites and how to package them and how to understand them, how to run comparable data and how to look at a, an investment analysis and then how to translate that and pitch that to an investor, which will help teach you how to do the raising money part as well. So these are the stepping stones from you going from rock bottom, from nothing, nothing, to being able to start to enter the property space. And this is a tangible way to do it. There's lots of people who've done it this way. So sourcing, that's what you wanna do. And once you get a few deals under your belt, your goal is to build up a war chest. So you're still saving money. Don't go upgrade your car, don't go 
start paying for somewhere more expensive to live in or doing some other stupid shit with your money, do not do that because even if you do make 10, 20 grand in a month from doing some sourcing, which can happen, you can do that relatively quickly. It could take you four to six months to start building up enough knowledge and enough of a skill set to be able to sell to investors and enough of a network where you've got that pool of investors where you could potentially make 10, 15 grand in a month. And you go, I'm fucking rich, mate. I'm going to pay for a free grand gaff now. I'm going to do this and do that. But you're not rich. You've got fuck all. You've just got a little bit of cash building up. You need to build up this war chest and translate that war chest into an asset class. And it's an asset class that then pays you passive money. And as you build up that passive money over time, that's when you can start upgrading your house, upgrading your car, doing whatever, because the money's rolling in each month. So when you start making good money doing sourcing, you then need to build up that war chest, save it. And ideally, you get yourself to a point where you've got about 50K. You want about 50K, if you can see that down there, 50K should then give you enough skin in the game to be able to partner with one of those investors or partner with an investor who may only have 100. So they don't quite have enough to do a deal on their own. But you could go, all right, well, you got 100. I got 50. Let's partner together. I'll put in all the work and all the time and you put in your 100 and then you can pay for all the soft costs with that. You could even split that 50 into 25 and 25 and work with two investors. You pay for the soft costs and take on those risks, i.e. getting the planning permission if you're getting planning permission or any surveys and anything else. And then they pay for the purchase and then you can get bridging finance to fund the rest of it. And you're both on the hook for the mortgage and the personal guarantees. So you've got skin in the game and you're starting to partner with people. My suggestion is to partner with an investor who's got slightly more of a war chest, someone who can afford to be able to inject capital if there are any mistakes that happen. That'll make sure that the scheme in any event will get finished. You have to make sure you've got the available capital to finish a scheme. But bear in mind, even when you save up this 50K, you should still be sourcing. So for the duration of say a nine to 12 month project, you should still be building up money in the background to help in the event that there may be some cost overruns and you need to inject some cash. And that's how you then get started. Then you're building an asset base with investors. The investor bit's very important. You have to be able to leverage money with investors who don't have the time or expertise, but they have the capital. And you put some skin in the game as well. When you're starting out, you have to put some skin in the game. As you prove your track record over time, you don't really need to put any money in. But this is a good way to start because you're going, look, I've got money as well, but I'm also going to put all the time and everything else in. And they're taking a bet on you because it's your first few deals. And th there's loads of investors out there. They will do it. There's loads of people out there that will do it. And then you want to get about five to 10 projects under your belt. That'll give you enough knowledge and you'll go, you'd have gone through the ring of it multiple times by that point to really solidify and understand what your niche is, what your model is. And from that, you can then really start scaling a business. So you want five to 10 projects, which could be two or three different investors or even five to 10 different investors where you're then partnering with your sourcing fee money with them and you're building up an asset base that you may own 50-50. And then you've got some passive income. And once you've got that passive income, you can sack off this job because you should be getting that in from the side. The sourcing revenue should also be giving you substantial cash flow. So do you really need the job anymore? Most probably not. And then you can start upgrading your house. You don't have to focus too much on frugality, although I'd say frugality is a great principle to have until you're at such a point of income where it really just doesn't matter. You could buy an expensive car and it's not going to dent your cash flow. But always, always be educating yourself and always, always be building that network. Never stop educating yourself. Always invest into yourself, whether that's reading books or spending the time going to networking or building a mastermind group or whatever it is. Always educate yourself and always continue to build that network. But eventually you, you may be able to drop the sourcing off and just focus on developing full time. But that is this video. I hope that's helped anyone starting out. This process will not be quick. This will take you three years, I would say. Three years is probably what's going to do that to where you're at a point where you're then building a portfolio. You may by the end of three years have three, four projects under your belt with your joint venture partners. But to get to five or 10, it's probably going to take a little bit longer than three years. But getting all this stuff done here, you know, getting the job, being frugal, understanding your cash flow, getting yourself educated, building that network, that's a year project in itself. And let alone then sourcing. And the sourcing, you could probably run in tandem as well. But to really get good at doing the sourcing to a point where you can start saving up 50 grand and not make a fuckload of mistakes, that could take you another year. And then in the third year, you're then really building up a war chest. You're starting to do those joint ventures with investors. Then you're becoming a developer. Now, if you think, oh, three years, that's quite a long time. Any business takes a long time and most businesses fail. But here's a foolproof way of doing it where you're risk mitigated the whole way through because you've got this job here. You're learning and learning, learning as you go. And you've got a low barrier to entry way of building up capital quite quickly. And through doing this, through packaging and sourcing deals and through working with investors, you can start project managing schemes where you can then charge an additional fee, potentially 10 to 20 grand, depending on the size of the deal. And with that, you're then learning how to actually do the project as well, which is going to help even more when building the portfolio. But all of this stuff, it will just assume it's going to take you three years. So how much do you want it? How much do you want to be a property developer? It is not a get rich quick scheme. It isn't. It's going to take you a while. But this is, to me, the best way to get into the marketplace. But that's just my ideas. So let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think is a good idea? You may have better ones than me. So let me know. Subscribe to this video. Big love. I'll see you in the next one.